Today we're gonna see if Gullfoss can act like a good sound button on stereophonic music material. Let's roll. I'm really excited to be showing you how to use Gullfoss with music, one of my favorite ways to use it. Not only in music for music's sake, but music in a multimedia experience, which we're gonna look at here at the end. We have three examples, one sort of a dubstep uh, kind of orchestra thing. Another one is just a straight orchestra underscore. And then another one is a live music duo, kind of not recorded very well, just to see if Gullfoss can help that out. Well, you can instantiate Gullfoss pretty much the same way in every digital audio workstation. Here in Adobe Audition, we would go to track effects, not clip effects, because we would want to add this to all clips in a particular track. Uh, you could do it on the clip level if you wanted, but I like track effects. We're going to go here. And because I'm on a Mac, I'm going to use AU, although you could happily use VST if you were on a PC. PC or Mac, and then Gullfoss happily comes up. And um, we've got basically five different parameters. Recover, basically, and, and again, it means it does a whole lot more than what I'm going to explain to you. But the bottom line is it boosts frequencies, which your brain might really want to hear more of. And as you saw in the example, it's moving all kinds of, I mean, almost infinite amount of EQ curves and bands to make that happen. Tame is the opposite, really. It brings down frequencies that your brain is a little too sensitive to, maybe. Bias allows you to switch between both recover and tame if you're using both settings, which we're going to show you how to use in this video. Brighten, once you're using recover or tame, adds a really beautiful high-frequency edge to the sound, especially if you're using tame. And lastly, boost works whether you're using recover or tame or not in adding a beautiful loudness contour to the overall sound, uh, both both the high frequency, the beautiful, intelligent high frequency boost, and same with the subs and lows. So I'm just gonna hit play and start adding recover. Now this is a setting we'd never use. 200% is like, you know, a knife in the face or a knife in your eardrum. Um, but uh, because we're streaming, I'm using settings so you can really hear what's going on. So um, we might want to use it a little bit more here, maybe at 100% for music. Music really, for us, uses Gullfoss in a way that uh, has a very different application. And these settings kind of take on different meanings um, for music. And you'll see why in a second. So if we just leave it at 100%, you can hear the difference. And you can see how intelligent it is at finding frequencies that are missing and adding them millisecond by millisecond. And some of you are looking already and going, yeah, but the bass drum, it's bringing down, right? Well, yes, what it's actually doing is bringing down the frequencies that are a little overt, a little bulbous in that bass drum and making the bass drum snappier. Listen to it with it off. Night and day, you know, right? It's, it's kind of woo, it's kind of whooshy, whooshy bass drum going on, and with it on, it's beautiful. So we're gonna. By the way, if you use Alt or Option, you can A B between settings. So right now I have it a hundred. If I hold down Alt or Option, it goes back to zero, and I can A B very quickly, which is super nice. Let's turn on Tame to a hundred percent, and you can hear what this sounds. Like. <laughs> Sort of, again, that opposite. It's adding a lot of energy to the sound, but muting frequencies that are poking through in a way that we don't want. And so let's call it about 100% here. Sure. And uh, we'll turn this off. Now here is, actually, let me turn this on. I'll show you bright. I mean, that's high energy slicing. And of course, it goes the other way for attenuation of high frequencies. And it's not just an EQ. It's very, very intelligent, as you can see. We'll bring this back to zero. Now, here's boost all on its own. And when it's in its inversion, it just adds, it does the opposite. It adds those mid frequencies. And it's very, very intelligent. Maybe it doesn't move as fast or is as responsive as tame or recover, but you can see how well it works. Also note that boost uh, works whether this is on or off. I also wanna show you one other aspect of this. These are the what I call the bypass frequency 
uh, sliders, if you will. You have one on the bottom, one on the top. Anything over here or over here now will not be processed by Recover or Tame, but Boost blasts everything. So you can see Recover's only working in the middle. For music, we don't really want to use this. So if you look at the other videos on 5.1 sound effects and dialogue, you'll see how important it is to use those. But music, eh. We want to kind of process everything. And for me, I like to start off at 100% and 100%. Again, these are all double settings. In the real world, when I'm not streaming to you, I'd be using 50-50. And, and what that allows me to use is the bias uh, slider, or the bias function in a really, really great way to be able to fine tune between these processes which way I'd like it. Check it out. <laughs> And if I'm using boost, a little bit of boost and a little bit of brighten, what bias allows me to do is, um, well, just check it out. I can't, I can't even explain it to you. Just listen. One has a lot of high frequency energy and one has a lot of body and power. For me, for just this track, I'd say, hey, let's listen to it here at 40. And now what happens with Boost is it no longer acts as, because it's also intelligent, it no longer acts as just a loudness contour. It acts in the same way of adding power and high frequency energy or loudness. Check this out, it's really, there's nothing like this. You still have plenty of lows, plenty of highs. It's not like, oh, it's cutting off the frequency. No, it's it's all there. But that kind of capability to just go, oh, we want it loud, we want it soft. I mean, we want it loud, we want it power. You can do this with your music and you can automate this without any zipper noise. What? I know, it's crazy. All right, let's check out the other piece. Now with Gullfoss off, I'm gonna turn it on and audition and turn it off on its own bypass. Okay, it's, you know, nice sustained pads with some sub-low bass going on there. And the strings, which we want to be careful about. There's a lot of mid-range energy in here, and we may want to use more of that tame setting to bring some of that into a contour, a little more control. But I'm going to start with this setting of 100 and 100, again, normally 50-50, and a little brighten and see what happens here. See what this does just on its own. So right away, uh, some of that low mid stuff got handled and some of the mid mid, but now there's a lot of energy in that upper mid that uh, kind of up there. I mean, it's beautiful. It's much more contour, but not really what I'd want to hear. So let's mess with bias here. And now that we got it sort of a little bit nicer on that upper mid range, let's add some boost and see whether we can get some of that power or some of that loudness and see which way we want to go. Definitely not that way. And bypass the whole thing. On. Oh, 
And if you're not listening on a good pair of headphones, the lows down there, the sub lows are so smooth now. They're constant. It's being balanced. And you can see all the incredible amount of work that this plugin is doing to give you a great sound. Let's look at one more example. Now, this recording is unique in that it's a live recording, not done very well in a really awful sounding room. It's actually my son doing one of his master's degree recitals with a piano that's out of tune. And it's kind of lousy. Now, look, I wasn't there. I didn't record it, so don't blame me. So what we need to be careful of is because Boost boosts both high and low frequencies. There's a lot of low rumble that's going on in there and boost goes be, uh, beyond those bypass uh, b borders. So we don't want to add more, too much more lows. So we want to add a little boost, but I think we need to focus on the brightness um, uh, to get those high frequencies instead of boost. <laughs> And notice the distortion has been magically removed. How is that possible? I don't know, but it is. Now let's just bypass and see if I'm losing my mind here. On. Off. And if that isn't a world of difference, I don't know what is. Now you're still watching, so I'm gonna show you one more example in multimedia. Let's roll. All right, we're gonna take a look at uh, Blade of Honor, the sci-fi pilot. Uh, we've got the stems for dialogue, sound effects, and music. We've got Gulf Foss instantiated on the music stem. Let's see what happens here. Again, I've got this simple 100 and 100 setting, but let's watch it with it bypassed. I think we snagged a large bear, sir. I think the bear snagged us. Twenty to one. We can't survive this no matter how good we are. This is crazy. So there's a lot of things going on here. And remember that you can automate Gulfoss in any way you want. But what we really want, there's a lot of flubbiness in that music. I mean, it's again, this is done after the mix. Okay, you've mixed it, it sounds great, and we're just kind of threading hairs here or pulling hairs. Measuring hair, something about hair. I don't know how that goes. But uh, very small moves, very small tweezing is required here. So let's turn off bypass. We've got our 100 100 setting. Again, double what we would ever really do uh, as you're streaming. So trying to make it uh, more obvious to you. I think we snagged a large bear, sir. I think the bear snagged us. Well, already it's better. There's a lot more high frequency energy in these kinds of things. Let's just take a solo gander at music. While we, While we move some settings here with bias. I'm going to say we're going to go kind of here. I don't think we need any brightness. In fact, if anything, I think we need to pull some of those high frequencies down a little bit so they're not interfering with sound effects or dialogue consonants. We're good through here. And let's see what happens if we add some boost now. Definitely not that. It's a much fuller sound and a little more reasonable given that there's sound effects going on. Let's unsolo, Han solo, the music, and let's see what happens all together. I think we snagged a large bear, sir. I think the bear snagged us. such a rick to 20 to 1? We can't survive this no matter how good- And then with a bypass for a second? I think we snagged a large bear, On. sir. I think the bear snagged us. Off. 
So the only thing that doesn't really work for me is that when the ships come in and it's doing the dubstep, the low frequencies, I'd love to have some more thump in there, wouldn't you? So let's see if we can automate this. I'm going to pull this down here so I can see read. Great stuff. Uh, 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 in fact, let's just go to the mixer. Here's the mix thing. I'm going to do latch. And let's see uh, if I can get a no zipper noise move on the boost. I think we snagged a large bear, sir. I think the bear snagged us. Such a rick to Twenty back to one. Five three. Yes. Let's see if it plays back. I think we snagged a large bear, sir. I think the bear snagged us. Such a rick to Twenty to one. Perfectly zipperless automation over that entire music track with all of this uh, horsepower going on underneath the hood. It's incredible to add body and really mix penetration without getting in the way of anything else. There's, there's nothing like Golf Oz, I'm telling you. All of us at cinemasound.com use Golf Oz all the time. We love it. Take a look at some of the videos here on this website to learn how to use it on all kinds of buses and individual tracks, including dialogue, sound effects, music, and even 5.1 surround. Dope. Until then, we'll see you in post. Even if you're